we're finally at the point where what we've all been talking about for the last three or four years is actually starting to happen. And premium linear content is going over the top outside of, at least potentially outside of the bundle. Um, although that's one of the sort of shadow debates we're actually having here. Uh, Dish uh, sort of won the show, as it were, with respect to OTT uh, when they announced their um, Sling TV uh, service, which is an over-the-top linear service with about a dozen channels, the lead one being ESPN, uh, for a uh, low price, $20 a month, much lower than what you'd pay for cable or, or satellite TV. Um, but at the same time, you have um, networks like CBS and HBO um, and, uh, to a, a somewhat lesser degree, NBC, um, making their content available directly to consumers over the top outside of any bundler or, or, or aggregator like Dish. So part of what you saw here, I think, um, this week <coughs> with uh, Dish, uh, Dish's announcement and, and um, their somewhat pointed comments that Joe Clayton and um, uh, other Dish folks made at their press conference aimed at, at CBS is sort of the beginning of what's going to be a long let's call it negotiation, over um, who's actually going to put this content um, over the top. Is it going to be um, direct, literally direct to consumers by the, um, by the networks and the rights owners, or is there going to be some sort of packager in the middle? And what are the terms going to be um, around that? Uh, what are the economic financial terms going to be around that? Uh, so. Um, what you saw this week is just sort of the beginning of what's going to be a long, long renegotiation of the terms of distribution in the television business. Sports is, is one of the few reliable types of programming that um, people will still tune in in real time to watch um, live. And um, if you look at, at, at um, what CBS has done, for instance, uh, with their over-the-top ser service, which includes their linear content, it does not include the NFL um, uh, games that CBS broadcasts because those rights are not included in the deal that, in the underlying deal that CBS has with the NFL. Uh, other people distribute that content online, primarily DirecTV and, and Verizon wireless to, to mobile devices. And um, even in, in what Dish announced this week, um, ESP, ESPN, of course, is the, is the lead network and they're the flagship network in that new service, but it does not include NFL content because those rights belong to somebody else. So um, what the sports leagues do here ultimately and who they decide to get in bed with, so to speak, um, if anyone, uh, is going to have, uh, they're going to have a lot to say about how this ultimately plays out. And uh, it, it's going to get bigger than just the OTT piece of it, because one of, one of the issues that's certainly going to arise um, in the sports broadcast world is that you have all these broadcasters who've paid god-awful sums of money for the rights to broadcast um, these games, and more and more the audience is, is moving online and, and is, is streaming the content. And by and large, the broadcasters don't have those rights because the leagues keep them to themselves. So you're going to get uh, a, uh, the next time those contracts come up, you're going to get a big fight between the current broadcasters and, and the leagues over who's going to have the rights to do this. Because if you're paying all that money, billions of, you know, tens of billions of dollars in some cases for those rights, and the audience is deserting your platform, um, you cannot justify continuing to pay those sort of licensing fees. So what, you know, what's going to happen to all of those economics? It'll arise, one area it'll arise fairly quickly, I suspect, is in regional sports networks, which know, show uh, the MSG network in New York or, or, you know, whoever, you know, the, you know, Cox Sports Florida, whatever it is. Um, don't quote me on that because that may not be a real network. But um, those networks have paid a lot of money um, for the broadcast rights and the leagues, the, you know, the NHL, the NBA, um, the uh, Major League Baseball retain the streaming rights for themselves. And, um, so we're, we're quickly approaching a point, I think, where the, where the current numbers will no longer work. And that's always a recipe for um, a renegotiation of those terms, which you know, 
could be contentious. Uh, you know, TV everywhere, again, is one of those things we've been talking about since, I don't know, two f whenever Jeff Bukas coined that term in 2010 or, or whenever it was. Um, and it's, it's actually sort of now just beginning to, to develop. And the, and the real catalyst for that has been mobile video. Um, you know, uh, the, the television uh, industry is, is, is sort of going through the same um, moment that the music industry went through a decade and a half ago in which um, you know, music, thanks to the, the iPod and the MP3 format, m you know, music moved out of the living room and into, a, in, into mobile and, and it, that became the, um, the thing that mattered to, to consumers. So the whole question became you know, getting the content onto mobile devices and, and that was a very uh, difficult period for the, for the record companies and the television industry is sort of facing the same thing with TV everywhere right now. Everybody knows that um, television has to get onto mobile devices and um, that's catalyzing a lot of, of what's happening now and, and actually the, the, the networks uh, are getting somewhat more progressive about that as you said that um, they are finally allowing um, the uh, uh, service providers, the, the middleman cable operators and, and to some degree the, the satellite guys to to make that content available on mobile devices outside of the home. One of the areas that I I've, uh, have focused on at GigOM was, I, I, I th and to, to a degree I still feel this way, I think the connection between mobile devices and the TV in the living room is actually a pretty important connection. Um, Chromecast, um, AirPlay on Apple TV. Um, to, to some extent, I think television is being pulled into the mobile ecosystems. That you know, your tablet, your smartphone is increasingly going to be the way you acquire content in the home, and then you're going to cast it to, to the to, to the screen that you prefer to be watching at, at at that moment. So, who owns that connection is going to become a very important issue. And you know, is it going to be Google? Is it going to be Apple? Is it going to be Microsoft? Is it going to be Sony with the PlayStation? Is it you know who is it going to be? And and how do you fit that player into the ecosystem that hasn't been there before? That's a whole new sort of layer um, in the distribution chain and in the value chain of the content because you know people will increasingly use those devices, which are much easier to navigate than a television and a remote control, um, to actually get the content they want into the home and then and, and the, or into wherever they are and then cast it to the appropriate screen. So owning that connection is going to, going to become a um, uh, an important um, discussion in, in the industry and it hasn't happened you know that discussion hasn't evolved or um, or developed as rapidly as I th thought it would um, but I still think that that's going to be a an important um, issue for the industry going forward.